Last month, we focused our attention on Ohio's efforts to build small startups into the next generation of large companies. But there's another group of businesses wedged in the middle. These companies are responsible for more than one third of America's GDP and 41 million jobs. Yet little is known about the middle market and how to help it grow. Ohio State's Fisher College of Business and GE Capital are co-hosting a national summit in October to get some answers. On this episode, we'll get a preview of that event and take a closer look at the middle market and its significance with a finance professor from Fisher College. We'll also get a business perspective from the CEO of Lancaster Pollard, a Columbus-based mortgage and investment banking provider named one of the nation's fastest growing private companies by Inc. Magazine. Well, some describe the mid-market as the heartland of American business, a powerful engine of growth and innovation. So why then does it, is it so hard to define? Well, most agree that the middle market is comprised of businesses with revenue between 10, 10 million and $1 billion. Nearly 369,000 companies made up the middle market in 2007, the latest census data available. It's estimated that only 1,200 of those companies are publicly owned. While it's easy to measure the success of middle market companies collectively, there has been a lack of quantitative assessment of the segment. Columbus-based Lancaster Pollard isn't a household name, but the investment firm has managed to grow into a successful middle market business despite the turbulent economic environment. CEO Tom Green recently took part in a unique lecture series at Ohio State's Fisher College of Business about the history of financial thought and practice. He gave business students insight into the company and how it operates. Green also shared the advantages and disadvantages of being a mid-sized company. Here's his view from the top. Lancaster Pollard is, a, uh, is an investment banking, mortgage banking, and investment consulting uh, holding company that owns three different companies. And we, uh, we primarily serve a, a unique niche in the, in the economy. We, we provide investment advice and debt capital markets solutions to senior living, long-term care, and health care organizations around the country. And I think what makes us unique might be that we are uh, such a niche player in that business and focus all of the energies of those three companies on really a fairly narrow segment of the, of the U.S. economy. Well, we've been expanding geographically. Uh, you know, we, we're an Ohio-based company, but over the last five or six years, we've been opening offices in different locations uh, around the country. We started out opening up an office in Kansas City, and then now we have offices in, in L.A., uh, Austin, Atlanta, and Philadelphia, as well as Kansas City and Columbus. The disadvantages, I guess, might be that you uh, maybe don't enjoy the name recognition, uh, the marketing um, uh, power, and and capital. Uh, you know, you have a large capital base. Um, the advantages, I think, are that you're much more nimble. Uh, you can change direction or, uh, or make adjustments to the trajectory of, of your organization uh, based upon um, opportunities you've identified in the market. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take a, a committee of, uh, of 20 to, uh, to make that decision. You can, you can literally make it in a day. And, uh, and you know, I think it's easier to, to control. And, um, and you, you have really one culture. Uh, and as organizations grow and they become quite large, and it's a very difficult for the CEO or management team to really um, uh, maintain a, a sort of homogeneous culture, and, it, and you end up with uh, lots of offices and lots of departments and lots of managers. And, and I think that's a, it's a different task. And I think uh, the entrepreneurs and CEOs that are successful at running small or mid-sized companies may or may not be, but probably aren't going to be great CEOs for large companies. And the reverse is also true. I think the CEOs for large companies uh, may make uh, a not so good CEO for a mid-sized company. We don't feel constrained by our size. Um, it's been a, it's been a, um, I think, at least to date, it's been, uh, it's been a benefit because we've been able to change direction and adjust our trajectory uh, as the market uh, presented itself to us and uh, some of our larger competitors are just it's more difficult for them to change direction and to be um, timely in seizing opportunities as we grow um, you know that will be increasingly difficult for us as well but so far we're we're doing I think a, a reasonably good job in that regard and I don't feel like we're constrained we have great banking relationships and we 
and people have been very supportive of, of our company. The current economic environment is definitely hurting business. Um, I think that's universally the case. Uh, with, in our case, with one exception, the, uh, the deterioration of the, of the U.S. economy and really the world economy has driven interest rates down and that has, um, that has helped a lot, of, uh, a lot of people refinance uh, uh, not only their homes but in our case their organizations. And so we've been the beneficiary of some uh, refinance opportunity that may or may not have been available to us um, a few years ago when rates were a little bit higher. So, you know, generally we've been sailing into a headwind, just like every other business in the country. Um, but I say the interest rates are probably uh, a big advantage. And the other is that, you know, we're not making large fixed capital investments. Most of our investments are in people. And, and those are a little easier to make than, than a manufacturing company who might be making large capital investments that you have to have a much, much longer horizon to, to repay. Our outlook is great. Um, we, we are very confident about um, our pipeline. Uh, we have enjoyed um, the development of a, of a pipeline that is um, very robust. And, and, and so the, you know, the, our vision of the next uh, few years is, is very positive. It's always difficult to, to project beyond a couple of years. Uh, our five-year forecast is, is, um, is good, um, and we're excited about that. Uh, so I would say the outlook is pretty good. We're, we're hopeful that the economy doesn't deteriorate more uh, you know, in these, in these um, difficult times.